Um, now I'd like to introduce Kathy Martin Moya. Hi, I'm Kathy Martin Moya, formerly Kathy Berry in the program. Um, <clears throat> I never really experienced, actually to myself, what happened to Lee, because um, Lee and I were newcomers uh, in the same house right around the time all this happened. So um, the things that I experienced were more watching other people. As soon as I saw that, I decided that I might want to agree to do what these people are. You saw this, actually. I, yeah. I watched Lee be thrown to the floor by Miller Newton um, when we were going. Uh, when we would be taken to the bathroom to go to the bathroom, that always seemed to be the torture chamber. I don't know what was beyond the, the stalls, but there's some sort of a room. I don't know if it was a shower area or what, but you would always often hear different types of torture going on, basically. You could hear people screaming and, you know, yelling and skin slapping against the ground, whatever. And, and when I first looked concerned, I got in big trouble there. Just keep going, just go to the bathroom and mind your own business, you know, keep your eyes forward. And I had known what had happened to her out, out in group and then I had heard different screams coming from the bathroom and that, most of my memories are, are pretty blank. I don't have a whole lot of memory back then, but that is the one image that is permanently burned into my memory. It just, it was unbelievable to me that, you know, a grown man was throwing her across the floor. Um, and nothing was being done about it. Uh, I was admitted into Strait St. Pete in uh, 1982, and uh, although I was, I guess, a brat, you could say, <laughs> you know, not, not, you know, a teenager that, you know, I was trying to find, I was trying to find my own way. And I didn't agree with everything my parents said, but I didn't have a drug problem. Um, but that didn't matter. They told me that I was in denial, and that's kind of a hard one to fight, you know. <laughs> and uh, they told me that I had to get honest and, and, you know, about my drugs and all that. And then in the meantime, uh, they were going to go ahead and put me in group because if I didn't sign in, they would have me court ordered. So I was there for 18 months on my phases and uh, six months of aftercare. And then I went on to six months as a officer of the Seven Step Society, or it's like a staff member. Um, I eventually realized, you know, just moved on and got away from there because I wanted to get away permanently. I didn't want to cop out and have to start all over again, not after all the time that I had put in. So I moved away from the program and pretty much just forgot about it. Um, Everything hasn't been peachy since then, but as of today, uh, I'm fine, and I look at my experiences helping to make me stronger. But not everyone is so lucky. Um, through the years, I had heard of a lot of the people who suffered mental breakdowns, and a disproportionate amount of people who had gone through the program committed suicide. I was adding them all up one day. I thought, I, I don't know if anyone that I know knows that many people who have committed suicide, and they all have one thing in common, and that is that they were in Straight Incorporated, or, you know, kids of New Jersey. Um, I always used to describe Straight as basically a cross between prison and military. Take the, the worst aspects of prison and the worst aspects of military, put them together, and you have Straight. And I think that the extreme conditions that the kids lived in is what pushed them over the edge to suicide. Um, I don't think that this is helping anybody. I don't think the ends, even if they come out looking good and sounding good, I don't think it justifies the means by which they get there. Um, one good thing that came from straight was I was forced into learning how to do public speaking standing up and talking in front of, you know, 300, 600 people about things I wouldn't even tell my mother, it, it made me more comfortable. So I decided that after a couple of years ago looking back and trying to research to find out just what happened to my family and me in the early 80s, that I would use the one good thing that they gave me against them, that I would be able to get up and I would speak against them. 
to let people know exactly what really did happen. And hopefully, the other thing that bothers me is I see my son looking just like me, I mean, in actions and everything else, and I could actually see myself putting him in a program like that based on what, how they presented it to the public if I hadn't ever been in straight. And that scares the heck out of me because I, I don't know if I could deal with his suicide on my conscience. So I think in the future we need to more clearly define what exactly a drug problem is. Um, we need to define how to determine who has a drug problem, who doesn't. Um, define whether it's a medical problem or just a social problem, whether doctors should deal with them or businesses as straight was. Um, and most importantly, we need to define what effective treatment is, what real help is. Um, no child should be treated more harshly than, than a common criminal, especially when they haven't committed a crime or especially in the name of helping them. Thanks.